हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लास्ट लेक्चर में जो हमने डिस्कस किया था दैट इज द ग्राफ ऑफ द पोलिनोम एंड द ज्योमेट्रिकल मीनिंग ऑफ द जीरोस ऑफ अ पोलिनोम नाउ आज हम जो डिस्कस करने वाले दैट इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द कोएफिशिएंट एंड जीरोस ऑफ द पोलिनोम राइट लेट अंडरस्टैंड बाय टेकिंग अ वन एग्जांपल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सपोज आई एम टेकिंग अ वन पोलिनोम p of x that polynomial is suppose i have x square minus 4x plus 3 if i want to find out the zeros of this polynomial so simply do the factorization of this right so here the first term coefficient is 1 and last term coefficient is 3 so the product is 3 so we need the two factors of 3 that addition should be 4 So that will be three one the three. Okay. Now you can see three and one. The addition is what four, right? But here the middle term splitting is there, so middle term sign is minus. So both the divided term get the minus sign. Okay. So what the factors we can write down x square in the place of minus four x two splitting terms. That is the minus three x and then minus one x. No need to write down one as a coefficient. Nothing there. so that means we can understood as a 1 and plus 3 okay now make the group is of the two terms it's a one group it's a second group right so now this one equal to i can take the x common so from the first term x square is there so x we have two times x multiply x one x we taken so one x left then minus 3 multiply x x we taken so what left 3 now from the last two terms the first term is negative so so we to we should take the minus common and now minus we taken common from both the terms so sign of both the terms will be changed so minus x becomes plus x and plus 3 becomes minus 3 so now see now again we have these two groups now from these two groups what we can take it common x minus 3 we can take it common so what left from the first term x and what left from the second term nothing whole the x minus 3 we take it taken common so nothing remaining so it's a one so these are the two factors so what are the zeros so simply we have to compare our polynomial with what zero so that means x square minus 4x plus 3 equal to zero which are the two factors of this polynomial one is the x minus 3 Another is a x minus one. So as a product, any of the one will be zero. Okay. So either x minus three will be zero or x minus one will be zero. So minus three shift to the right side. So minus three becomes plus three. And when minus one comes to right side, so x becomes plus one. So these two are the zeros of this polynomial. Suppose I will multiply this polynomial by two. For example, so it's a x square. Suppose I will write down it's a two x square minus eight x plus six. When I multiply here by two, so it's a two x square. Then it's a minus eight x, and then it's a plus six. So again, to find out the zeros of this polynomial, I will take the two common. So what left from the first term x square? Here what is remaining? Minus 4x and plus 3 to the 6. So 3 left. See, you can look at here this polynomial and this polynomial is same. So again the factors of this polynomial is what? X minus 3 and x minus 1. Okay. So zeros again. x equal to three and x equal to okay. These are the two zeros of this polynomial. Now let understand with the general form the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient. Okay, understand much of this? Okay. If you put here three or the one, so you can get the overall polynomial value is what zero. Okay. now we will understand the relation between the coefficient and the zeros okay 
Now you have to remember this. At this form, there is only multiple part. But in this form, we have the multiple part two. Later on, we will discuss again this part. Now earlier we discussed about the one polynomial that is the x square minus 4x plus 3. What the zeros? It's a 1 and 3. Okay, and what the factors? So p of x is equal to x square minus 4x plus 3. So the factors are x minus 3 and x minus 1. And second example that we taken the 2x square minus 8x plus 6 by taking 2 common so again we have the two same factors and same zeros right 1 and 3 now we are taking general form of quadratic polynomial Now what is the general form? It's a ax square plus bx plus c where the condition is required a does not equal to 0 because x square coefficient should not 0 right otherwise it will be not a quadratic polynomial ok now let us assume just like here we have the two zeros 1 and 3 ok so in the general we assume let Let two zeros are alpha and beta. So obviously the two factors that's a x minus alpha and x minus beta. Okay, just like here, one is the zero, so x minus one is a factor, and three is the zero, so x minus three is a factor. Okay, so these two are the what factors. So at last our polynomial can be write like ax square plus bx plus c that is equal to x minus alpha x minus beta but it may be any multiple of k any number right suppose here this polynomial the factor is x minus 3 and x minus 1 but for this polynomial again we have the same factor and multiple is 2 so it may be 1 it may be 2 it may be any real number. So for that reference in the general form we take a k. K will be any real number. Okay. Now simply to derive the relation between the zeros and the coefficient of a polynomial, we will simplify this part. So x multiplied with this both the terms. So x multiplied with x. What happened? X squared x multiplied with beta but this one is a positive this one is a negative so plus minus the product is minus and the beta x now here minus multiplied with plus so minus alpha into x alpha x and minus multiplied with minus alpha into beta okay bacho? now this one is a term with the degree 2 but here these two terms are there with the same one power so we will arrange them by taking common so here minus terms are there so we can take it minus common x is also there in both the terms so I can take the x also common so what left minus we take in common so sign will be changed so minus beta becomes the plus beta and the minus alpha becomes plus alpha and plus alpha into beta okay and now Again, little bit simplification. X square minus. I will take this bracket here and x later on. Okay. So now it's a ax square plus bx plus c. Okay. And now we will multiply it again. Ax square plus bx plus c. K I will multiply here. So it will be k x square minus k 
alpha plus beta into x plus k alpha beta. So k multiply with x square, k multiply here and k multiply here. Now we will compare the terms one by one. Here the x square coefficient and here the x square coefficient. Here the x square coefficient is what? A and here the x square coefficient is k. So a is equal to k. Second, now compare the coefficient of x here and as well as here. So what we can say? Here the x coefficient is b and here co x coefficient is minus k alpha plus beta. So that is the minus k alpha plus beta. Okay. And at last, the value of c constant term. Here the constant term is what? k alpha into beta. k alpha into beta. And now we can derive the relation easily. Right? Suppose I will take here, these are the two zeros alpha and beta. So that means we can say sum of the zeros. And here alpha into beta, that means we can say product of the zeros. So alpha plus beta. Right? Beta is equal to what? We have the B is equal to minus k alpha plus beta. So if I want to derive the value of alpha plus beta, so minus k from multiplication to division. So how I can write down? Alpha plus beta is equal to minus k goes to the denominator. So B upon minus k. Right? The meanwhile, here C is equal to k alpha into beta. So C is equal to k we want to derive the value of alpha into beta that means the product of the zero that's a c by k and what the value of k that's a a so that means alpha plus beta that is equal to b upon minus minus we will write down in the numerator okay because in numerator we are taking either positive or negative denominator is always positive and now the product alpha into beta that is the c by a now you can understand here sum of the zeros alpha plus beta that is equal to b and a they are the coefficient and product of the zeros c by a again these are the coefficient so simply we can write down sum of the zeros that is we can say in the form alpha plus beta that is equal to minus b by a what is b that's a coefficient of x and what is a that is a coefficient of x square and what is the product of the zeros the product of the zeros are that is we can say alpha into beta and what is that form? C by A. What is C? That's a constant term. And A is what? Coefficient of x square. Okay. So now this way we can derive the relation between the zeros and the coefficient of the polynomial. Now let's discuss some examples. Okay, wait. Now, just we derive that for the quadratic polynomial, the sum of the zeros that is the minus b by a. b that means the coefficient of x and a that means coefficient of x square, right? And the product of zeros that is equal to c by a. That is equal to c that means a constant term in our polynomial and a that means coefficient of x square. Now in our NCRT textbook, now we can solve the question number 1. Exercise 2.2, in that we have the question 1. What the question? Find the zeros of the following quadratic polynomials and verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients. We are taking a few examples of that. Okay, a very first example that I taken. It's a x square minus 2x minus 8. This polynomial we have. First of all, we will calculate the zeros of this polynomial. Right? So, 
So for that, x square minus 2x minus 8, that I will compare with the 0 because I want to find out the zeros of this polynomial. Now I have to do the factorization of this and it's a trinomial, it's not a perfect square trinomial. So we will do the factorization by splitting the middle term. So what the coefficient of first term? 1. What the coefficient of last term? That's a minus 8. So the product is minus 8. If the product is negative, so splitting of these two terms, that should be a subtraction 2. So, 8, we need the two factors of 8, that subtraction should be 2. See, listen with you. Remember, if your product is negative of the first and last term, so for this number, the product subtraction should be like uh, your middle term. And if this one is a positive, so splitting of this number in a two factor, that addition should be like a middle term, right? Here our product is negative. So we will divide the 8 into the two factors, that product should be 8. But that subtraction should be 2. So for the 8, I can do the 4 and 2. These are the base option we have. Okay, otherwise 8 ones are 8 also option we have. But 8 and 1 subtraction is 7. So and we require what? 2. So, I will select the factor what? 4 to the 8. 4 into both are the factors of 8. That product is 8 and that subtraction is 2. Now, it's a time to give the sign. Okay. So, when the subtraction take place? When the one term is negative and another term positive. If the same sign is there, so addition will take place. Right. So, here the splitting we are doing for middle term. So, middle term sign minus. That goes to the greater factor and opposite sign to the smaller factor. So what I can write down? x square. In the place of minus 2x, I will write down the two splitting term. One is the minus 4 and here it's not a splitting for only minus 2, it's a 2x. So I have to write down here x also. Okay. And another splitting term is a plus 2x and minus 8 is there. Okay. And now again we will take the factorization by taking the group of two terms. Okay. Now from the first group, what I can take it common? X. What is left from the first term? X. Minus 4 into X. X we take on common. So what left? 4. Plus from these two terms, first term positive. So I take a positive common. So no any change. And 2 is also there. So we can take it common. 2. So what is left from the first term? X. Minus from 8 we take a common what? 2. So 2 4s are 8. Right? And now again from these two terms. What we can take it common? In these both the terms. I have the X minus 4 as a common factor. So I will take the X minus 4 common. So what left? Here it's a X and here it's a plus 2 and that is equal to 0. So as we discussed at a time the product right any one term will be 0. So either x minus 4 will be 0 or x plus 2 will be 0. Okay. So when minus 4 shift to the right side so x will be what plus 4 and here x will be what minus 2. So which are the two zeros? It's a 4 and minus 2. Okay. So it's a first point find out the zero. So we calculated the two zeros of this polynomial are 4 and minus 2. Now let me verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients of the polynomial. Right. So for that whatever the two zeros we derive that we will label it as a let alpha is equal to 4 and beta is equal to minus 2. Without assuming assumption also you can do it, right? Suppose without assumption, if you want to say, now we will write down the sum of the zeros first of all and the product of the zeros. Now what the formula for sum of the zeros? That's a minus d by a. But that we will write down later on. 
the sum of the zeros which are the two zeros for us it's a 4 plus minus 2 these two are the zeros that we are making addition so 4 plus minus minus 2 so my answer is plus 2 and now forget about this part now start with this second part sum of the zeros we already done now we want to derive this relation that means the coefficient of x and coefficient of x square it should be minus d by a and it should be like the sun sun okay so now i am not writing anything here further okay now the second part minus b by a what is the value of b so look at the our polynomial here my polynomial is x square minus 2x minus 8 when I compare here with the ax square minus 2x minus uh, bx plus c with the general form we will compare ok so what the value of a here x square coefficient is a here x square coefficient is 1 here x coefficient is b here x coefficient is minus 2 so value of b that is equal to minus 2 constant term c here constant term minus 8 so value of c is minus 8 now we will utilize these values here ok so now another part minus b by a what the value of b minus 2 what the value of a 1 what the minus 2 that is the coefficient of x b is the coefficient of x ok and in the denominator what we have coefficient of x square that is the 1 coefficient of x square a coefficient of x square that is 1 ok what the answer of this minus minus becomes plus 2 in the denominator 1 so overall answer is what 2 so both are equal so this way derived the relation between the sum of the zeros and the coefficient of the polynomials now come to the second point product of the zeros here which are the two zeros 4 and minus 2 now we will take the product 4 in another bracket minus 2 plus minus minus 4 to the 8 ok now stop here now come to the second part c by a what is the value of c here minus 8 that coefficient part now we will discuss minus 8 that's a c upon a what the value of a 1 minus 8 that is what coefficient of it's a constant term ok C that is a constant term and A this value is what 1 that is what coefficient of x square and now look at here minus 8 upon 1 what answer minus 8 so that means product of the 0 minus 8 and if I compare with the coefficient that is a C by that is again the same answer the sum of the zeros that is the 2 when I compare with the coefficient, again I get the answer that is minus b by a, that is the 2. So this way we can verify the relation between the zeros and the coefficient of the polynomials. Now take the another example. It's a question number 1, the sub question 2. Suppose I will give the name of this polynomial p of s. Okay. First we will calculate the zeros of this polynomial. So I will compare this polynomial with what? 0. That means s square minus 4s plus 1 is equal to 0. 4s square, sorry. Okay. Now, this polynomial, it's a perfect square polynomial. Right? So, we do the factorization by the perfect square polynomial. How we can recognize it? See, 4s square, the square root is what? 4, the square root is 2. s square, the square root is s. Last term 1, the square root is 1. And multiply by 2, that's your middle term. 4s. So this way you can identify this trinomial is a perfect square trinomial. Okay. We can do the factorization by splitting the middle term also. But if you recognize it's a perfect square trinomial, so it's easier for us for the calculation point of view. So it's a perfect square of 4s square. The square root is 2s. Middle term sign minus and 1. The square root is 1. The whole square. Here we are following the identity a square minus 2ab plus b square. So what the factor? a minus b the whole square. This we followed here. 
So here we have the two factors, but both are same. 2x minus 1 the whole square. So 2s minus 1 and 2s minus 1. That means 2s minus 1 is equal to 0 or 2s minus 1 is equal to 0. That means s is equal to minus 1 goes to right side plus 1 and from the multiplication 2 it will goes to the denominator. So s answer will be 1 by 2. Here s will be again 1 by 2. So here both zeros are same. See in the graph of the polynomial we discussed about this part. The, for the quadratic polynomial, the graph of the quadratic polynomial is the parabola upwards here downwards and it can be intersect with the x-axis either in a two points or in a one point or in a no any point, right? So here the both the zeros are same. That means the graph of this quadratic polynomial will intersect with the x-axis in only one point, okay? Now, see these are the two zeros. So we will write down here. Zeros are 1 by 2 and 1 by 2. These are the two zeros. And now we will verify the relation between the zeros and the uh, coefficient of the polynomial. Right? So for that I will again write down the polynomial. That is the 4s square minus 4s plus 1. Now compare with the standard quadratic polynomial. So s square coefficient that is the a that is equal to 4 s coefficient that is the b that is equal to minus 4 and the constant of c that is equal to 1. So we have to change here the coefficient of not s, x, it's a s, it's a s square and it's a s square. Okay. Now see, sum of the zeros, sum of the zeros, these two are the zeros for us, 1 by 2 and 1 by 2. So I will make the addition 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2. Here you can see for the fractional number, but the denominator is same. So, the LCM is what? 2. Numerator 1 plus 1, that is the 2. So, overall answer is what? 1. This is the one part. Now, come to the second part. For the coefficient, the sum of the zeros will be the coefficient of S upon coefficient of S square and minus. Okay? So, the coefficient of S, that is equal to what? B, that is the minus b by a. Okay, now come back again. Minus, what the value of b? That's a minus 4. What the value of a? 4. Now you can see here, minus minus plus. So 4 by 4, cancel out, the overall answer is 1. So both are same. Sum of the zeros and the minus b by a. Now product of the zeros. Which are the two zeros? 1 by 2. We will take the product with again 1 by 2 because both the zeros are same. 1 by 2 multiply 1 by 2. So 1 1s are 1 and 2 2s are 4. Further, I will write down, I will not uh, make it equal. First I will rewrite. Now the constant term and the coefficient of s square. Constant term that is the c, coefficient of s square that is the a. Now what the value of c? 1. What the value of a? 4. You can see here this both the answer same. So I can write down its equal. Okay. Now take the another example. Please write down all the things. Okay. So we move. only this part so I need not write down it again and again. For you there is no any facility. For me it's okay. Now we will take the another example. We are taking the example number 3. That is the 6x square minus 3 minus 7x. Okay. First we will label in this polynomial as a P of x. Okay. Now to find out the zeros of this polynomial, first of all, we will arrange it. So P of x is equal to 6x square in a standard form minus 7x and minus 3. 
Now to find out the zero, I have to compare my polynomial with zero. So that is the six x square minus seven x minus three equal to zero. Now it's not a perfect square polynomial, so we will factorize by splitting the middle term. What the coefficient of x square six? What the coefficient of last term? Minus three. The product is minus eighteen. Six threes are eighteen plus minus minus eighteen. Here the product is negative. So we need the two factors of eighteen. That subtraction should be middle term seven. Okay. So eighteen that means eighteen ones are eighteen, but subtraction is what seventeen. So we will not use it. Right. Six threes are eighteen, but six and three the subtraction is three. So again it's not useful for us. But one more factor that is nine twos are eighteen. So you can see here nine and two the subtraction is seven. So this one is a perfect fraction for us. Right. Now it's a time to give the sign. So middle term sign goes to the greater factor and opposite sign to the smaller factor. So how we will write down six x square in the place of minus seven x? I will write down the minus nine x and plus two x and minus three equal to zero. Now the first two terms, last two terms. From the first two terms, what we can take it common? So number wise three and the variable x. So three we can take it common and x also we can take it common. So three twos are six. So I will write down here two. From the x square we take an x. So x is left minus three threes are nine. So three is here left. X we already taken common. From these two terms, right? First term is positive, so we will take it common plus. So there is no any change further in the bracket. And no any other number common, so nothing is common. So one always we have to take it. So now the rest of the terms are as it is: two x minus three, that is equal to zero. Now again you can see these two are the equal factors, so that we can take it common. So two x minus three, and the rest of the part three x and plus one equal to zero. So any of one will be zero at a time. So two x minus three will be zero, or three x plus. One equal to zero. So what the value of x will show? It's a minus three goes to right side plus three and two in the denominator. So three by two. And what is here? It's a x equal to plus one goes to right side. It will be minus one and three multiplication to division. Right? Now, so these are the two zeros for us. Which are the two zeros? Three by two and minus one by three. Three by two and another one is a minus one by three. These are the two zeros. Okay. And now we will verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient. So now our polynomial is the six x square minus seven x minus three. When I compare with the standard quadratic polynomial, so x square coefficient a, x coefficient is b. And the constant that is the minus three. Okay. Now sum of the zeros. So the zeros are three by two and plus minus one by three. So now look at here, right? Plus minus minus. So three by two and minus one by three. Now take the LCM. So three and two the LCM is six. So to make it six, we have to multiply here three. So numerator three threes are nine. And here three twos are six, so numerator will be minus uh, three twos are six, so two ones are two, so it will be seven by six. Okay. Now come to the another part. That is what minus the coefficient of again here we have the x, so we have to change it by x. Okay. Coefficient of x upon coefficient of x squared. So minus coefficient of x. That is what. That's a b. It's a minus b by a. So, what the answer for that? Minus what the value of b? Minus seven. What the value of a? It's a six. And now you can see here minus minus becomes plus. Okay. So seven by six. So it's verified. Now the product of the zeros. So product of the zeros we have the three by two, and the other one is a minus one by three. Plus minus minus three three will be cancelled out. What left numerator one and denominator what two? Now take the another part. 
constant term divided by the coefficient of x square that's c by a what the value of c minus 3 what the value of a 6 now you can see here 3 to the 6 so our answer is what minus 1 by 2 okay so this way we can verify the fourth number example let our polynomial p of u that is given to us 4 u square minus 8 u here the variable that is u so that's why we given the labeling that is p of u okay now to find out the zeros i will compare this polynomial with what zero so that means 4 u square minus 8 u equal to zero now we can take it common here 4 as well as u so 4 we take a common from the u square we take a common u so u multiply u that is u square so 1 u left minus 4 to 2s are 8 so 2 here left and 2 we have be already taken that is equal to 0 4 never be 0 so either u will be 0 or 4 is a constant number it never be 0 so u minus 2 equal to 0 so what the value of u 2 so these two are the zeros right so we will write down here again which are the zeros 0 and 2 okay now we will verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients right so our polynomial p of u is equal to what 4 u square minus 8 u here no any constant term so we will consider as what 0 ok so when I compare here with the standard quadratic polynomial so u square coefficient a 4 u coefficient minus 8 that is b and the constant term nothing is there so we have to take it as a 0 now come to the sum of the zeros the sum of the zeros the zeros are the 0 plus 2 so my answer is what 2 ok and now after this come to the another part it's a minus b by a so what the value of b minus 8 upon what the value of a 4 and minus sign is there ok so now you can see here minus minus plus 8 by 4 and 8 by 4 you can easily say equal to what 2 now product of the zeros so 1 is 0 is the 0, another 0 is the 2. So 2 into 0 that multiplication is 0. Now come to the other part. The product of the zeros that equal to c by a. c that is what? 0 upon a that means what? 4. If the numerator is 0 and denominator is a non-zero, so overall answer is what? 0. Right? Take one last example from our exercise. Okay, Micho? Here remember you have to write down u which u then here u square variable u is there so we have to use it u x is there so we have to use it x ok now take the another example the other example given in our textbook that is the fifth example it is a t square minus 15 ok again we will assume it like p of t ok now to find out the zeros we have to compare it with 0 so t square minus 15 equal to zeros we can find out the zeros of this polynomial by the two different ways both I am explaining you the t square that factor the both the terms are there between that we have the minus sign so make the factorization so t square square t square minus b square a plus b and a minus b so t square square is t 15 the square root nothing possible so root 15 plus and another one is minus that is equal to 0 so t plus root 15 equal to 0 or t minus root 15 is equal to Zero. So here the value of p will be minus root 15 that's a 1 0 for us and here it's a plus root 15 it's a second 0 for us and the other way is there 
it's a t square minus 15 so minus 15 goes to right side it's a plus 15 so t will be when i take the square root of 15 square root we didn't get it because it's not a perfect square but it plus or minus okay so this way again we get the two factors t plus root 15 and t minus root 15 okay which so our zeros are root 15 and the minus root 15 okay now come to the coefficients so our polynomial p of t that is equal to t square minus 15 here the t square 2 power term is there but t the power 1 term is missing so we have to take it coefficient 0 so plus 0 t and minus 15 understood whatever the missing term take it with the coefficient 0 okay so the comparison will be easier now t square coefficient that's a 1 t coefficient that's a b that's a 0 and the constant term that is the minus 15 okay now come to the relation between the sum of the and the product of the zeros with the coefficients right so sum of the zeros we have the 1 0 what root 15 plus another 0 minus root 15 so what happened root 15 plus minus minus root 15 that subtraction is 0 come to the other, other part the minus p by a sum of the zeros so minus value of b is what 0 upon value of a is what 1 so 0 by 1 it will be 0 so both are equal now the product of the zeros product of the zeros that's a root 15 and the another 0 minus root 15 plus minus minus the product root 15 to root 15 what happened 15 right root 15 to root 15 that means root 15 the square and square root the square is what square root will be removed okay now come to the other part the product of the zeros will be equal to c by a so now we will verify value of c is what minus 15 upon a is what 1 now you can see minus 15 by 1 that is equal to minus 15 so this way we can verify it last we have to make it here okay it's of the variable okay so we have to change the variable it's a t it's a t square it's a p square okay which okay which अब हम अपने टेक्स्टबुक का क्वेश्चन नंबर 2 डिस्कस करने जा रहे हैं जो एक्सरसाइज 2.2 में ही हमारे पास है राइट सो व्हाट द क्वेश्चन फाइंड द क्वाड्रेटिक पॉलीनोमियल इफ सम ऑफ द जीरोस एंड प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द जीरोस आर गिवन जैसे सबसे पहले एग्जांपल जो हमारे पास फोर्थ uh, एग्जांपल है जो हम उसको लेते हैं वन वन दैट इज गिवन टू अस दैट मींस फर्स्ट गिवन सम ऑफ द जीरोस एंड सेकंड इज गिवन दैट इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द जीरोस राइट and earlier we derived some relation between the polynomial and the zeros that is the ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 is equal to k x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha into beta remember that right few minutes back we discussed it right so x square minus what is this sum of the zeros and what is this product of the zeros and alpha and beta is what zeros of our polynomial so First, we will start with the let zeros of alpha and beta. Two zeros, suppose I'm assuming that they are alpha and beta, right? So, sum of the zeros symbolically, what I can write down alpha plus beta. That is what one. And the product of the zeros, alpha into beta, that is already given one. It's not a zero; it's a sum of the zeros, and it's a product of the zeros. So we taken the two zeros, alpha and beta, right? So the sum of the zeros that is alpha plus beta, that is one, and product of the zeros that is equal to one. Okay. Now our polynomial with the that part we can say k x square minus 
sum of the zeros and product of the zeros. Simple. And k is what? Any constant, right? But for the quadratic polynomial is there, so that not equal to zero. Okay. Now k we will replace the values one by one minus sum of the zeros is what one into x plus product of the zeros is what one. Make the habit to make uh, replace these values in a bracket. Okay. So the sign we can manage it easily. X square minus one as it is and x so minus x and plus one. So this one is a about bar polynomial. Sometimes somebody uh, write down with the without k also, but this is the proper way to write down it. Okay. Now take the another example. Done. Okay. Now I change only two things: sum of the zeros and product of the zeros, and rest of the part. Okay. Suppose we are taking the question number one from that. That is given to us one by four n minus sum of the zeros. That is the one by four m product of the zeros given minus. Now let us come here. X square minus sum of the zeros. What is given? One by four. Make it bracket. Simple. Plus what is the product of the zeros? Minus one. Write down the separate bracket for that. And now k. It's a x square minus as it is because these all are positive. One multiply with x, then it is x by four plus minus minus one. Okay. Now simply take the LCM to make it standard form. So four is the LCM. So k four multiply here. So four x square here it's a minus x and here four ones are four. The LCM is what four. LCM four here four is not there. We take it, so we multiply the numerator. Here four already there, so numerator as it is, and denominator is nothing. We take an four. That means one is there denominator. So four ones are four, so numerator also four ones are four, right? And we can make our changes further here. I will write down this four with the k also here. Okay? They have the same meaning. Understood? This one is our required polynomial. Take one more example. Understood, bicho? It's a so simple thing. I will take the second example. Root two and one by three. One is a irrational, another one is a rational, right? So again, sum of the zeros that is root two, product of the zeros one by three. Now simply replace the value here. X square minus sum of the zeros root two x plus product of the zeros one by three. Okay. Now sum of the zeros and product of the zeros both are positive, so No any change for the sign. Root two x plus one by three. Okay. Now to further simplify, make it in a simple form, standard form. We will take the LCM. What the LCM? Three. I will write down three here. Okay. So here we have to multiply by three. So three x square. Here I have to multiply by three. So three root two x. And here three is already there, so numerator as it is one. Clear? So this one is again our required polynomial. Okay. Take it down another example. Take care of this. Okay. One last example that we are taking. That's all. 
fifth term question for us minus 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 sum of the zeros is what minus 1 by 4 and product of the zeros is what plus 1 by 4 again our polynomial this one is our generalized form x square minus what the sum of the zeros minus 1 by 4 x and what is the product of the zeros minus minus plus x multiplied with 1 and x by 4 here plus 1 by 4 now 4 is the LCM I will write down with the k in the denominator 4 4 is the LCM so here I have to multiply it by 4 4 x square here already 4 is there so numerator unchanged denominator is already 4 numerator unchanged this one is again our required Quadratic polynomial. Understood? Okay, Richard. Now, after discussing the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient of the polynomial for the quadratic polynomial, now we will discuss about the same point for the cubic polynomial. So, the general form of the cubic cubical poly, cubic polynomial that is the ax cube minus it's a plus bx square plus cx plus d where a not equal to 0. Okay. And just like earlier for the quadratic polynomial, we assumed the two zeros alpha and beta. So now for the cubic polynomial, we can require it's a three zeros. Suppose that assume that three zeros are suppose we assume alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. 3 degrees there, so almost we can say it's a at most 3 zeros we will get it. Okay, now so what are the factors? So factors are x minus alpha, x minus beta, and x minus gamma. Okay, we discussed this in the quadratic polynomial also. Okay, now our polynomial ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d can be write in the form of factor like multiple of k and then x minus alpha x minus beta and x minus gamma okay now do the multiplication one by one first i will multiply with this two bracket to each other so x multiply with this two it will be x square minus gamma x minus beta multiply with these two that is the minus plus minus beta x minus minus plus beta into gamma okay now further x minus alpha this bracket i multiply here so again the expansion x multiply with this all the terms so x multiply with x square what happen x cube x multiply with all these three terms one, one by one so minus gamma x square here minus beta x square here plus beta gamma x now minus alpha multiply with this all now take care here the minus sign is there so when we will multiply so sign of all these terms will be changed this plus becomes minus and what we are multiplying alpha here so alpha x square minus alpha gamma x this minus becomes plus now this minus becomes plus alpha beta x we multiply here by alpha okay and here again alpha so this plus becomes minus alpha beta gamma and now you multiply this all the terms by what k so k x cube right minus uh, let do it uh, like uh, making a group also it's a first term is x cube now 1 2 3 these are the terms with the x square suppose we will do the group first so that's a better option x cube here the x square terms are minus gamma x square minus beta x square and minus alpha x square so take all the terms together so we can take minus common as well as x square so here it's alpha beta gamma 
So alpha plus beta plus gamma and the x squared. Okay. Now take the all x terms together. So all these three are positive alpha beta, beta gamma and gamma alpha. X that is common among all. So plus making a one group and take the x common. So alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha and gamma and the x common for these all the three x terms. And at last minus alpha beta gamma. Okay. So now clear. So now we will multiply by k. So what happened? K x cube minus k alpha plus beta plus gamma x squared plus k alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma x minus k alpha beta gamma. Okay. And ax cube plus bx squared plus cx plus b. Now we will compare the coefficient of x cube, x squared, x and the constant one by one. Okay. First of all, this one. Okay. So when I x cube coefficient is what? A. x cube coefficient here, k. So what I can write down? I will write down a is equal to what? k. Right? Second. What the another simplification? x square coefficient. Here the x square coefficient is b. And here the x square coefficient is minus k alpha plus beta plus gamma. So, value of b that is equal to minus k alpha plus beta plus gamma. Okay. Now further, coefficient of x here, it's a c. So what I have to write down? Here, x coefficient is c. And here the x coefficient is k alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma. So what we have to write down? Value of c that is equal to r k alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma. Okay. And at last, d. So d what we have to write down? Here it's a constant. Here it's a big constant. So what we can compare? So constant value d is equal to minus k alpha beta gamma. Okay. That's so simple. Value of a is equal to k. That we will replace here. Okay. So we can get the sum of all the zeros. That is the alpha plus beta plus gamma. Minus k comes to the denominator, so b upon minus k. But usually we will write down the minus sign in the numerator. So minus b by k. So what is the value of k? A. So that is the minus b by a. Okay. So sum of the zeros. Suppose I will write down here alpha plus beta plus gamma. That is equal to minus b by a. Now come to the another part here. The sum of the product of the Two zeros taken at a time. That we can say here. So alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma. Okay. So k comes to the denominator of the c. So c upon what k? And what the value of k? That is the a. So this one I have to write down c by a. That is called the sum of the product of the two zeros taken at a time. Okay. And at last product of all the zeros, right? So, minus k comes to the denominator. So, alpha into beta into gamma, that I have to write down d upon what? Minus k. So, alpha into beta into gamma, that is equal to what? d upon what the value of k? That is the a. And minus sign here. So, this way we can derive the relation between the sum of the zeros and the product of the zeros. Okay. So, if the three zeros are given, so you have to use this format. x cube minus this one, alpha plus beta plus gamma into x square plus the product of the sum of the product of the two zeros taken at a time and the all the zeros product. And the plus here. So, you will get your cubic polynomial. And 
this one is the relation okay now in our optional exercise uh, there is a uh, two examples given related to this one so let's uh, discuss about this now in our ncert textbook the exercise 2.4 it's a optional exercise okay in the question number 1 there are the two questions given to us and simply the cubical polynomial and for this cubical cubic polynomial we have the two different values uh, three different values that we have to check they are the zeros of this polynomial or not and also verify the relationship between the coefficient and zeros of this polynomial in both the question we have to calculate the same thing right now let's do the calculation one by one suppose for the first polynomial i will give the name of this polynomial p of x that is equal to 2x cube plus x square minus 5x plus 2 first i will check 1 by 2 is the zero of this polynomial or not so simply we have to replace the value of x 1 by 2 here so 1 by 2 the whole cube plus 1 by 2 the square minus 5 and 1 by 2 and plus 2. Now do the simplification. 2, 1 the cube is 1, 2 the cube is 8. So 1 by 8, 1 by 2 the whole cube is 1 by 8. Plus 1 the square is 1, 2 the square that is the 4 minus 5 ones are 5, 5 on 2 and plus 2. Okay, and here it's a 2 4s are 8. So we have the 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 minus 5 by 2 and plus 2. Okay, so what happened? To make the addition subtraction, first we have to take the LCM. So for the 4 and 2, the LCM is what? 4. Here already 4 is there, so numerator 1. Here already 4, so numerator 1. Here 2, 2s are 4. To make it 4, we have to multiply it by 2. So numerator 5, 2s are 10. Here denominator is nothing, so 1. So we have to multiply it multiply by 4 to get our LCM. So we will multiply the numerator also by 4. So 4 2 is 8. Okay. So 1 plus 1, 2. 2 plus 8, 10. Minus 10. So numerator 0, denominator 4. So overall answer 0. Okay. So 1 by 2 is the 0 of this polynomial. Now let's take the another value 1. So my polynomial P of x. That is equal to 2x cube plus x square minus 5x plus 2. Now we will replace the value of x here, 1. So 1, 2, 1 the cube plus 1 the square minus 5 into 1 plus 2. So now 1 the cube is 1, so 2 remains as it is. 1 the square is 1, minus 5 ones are 5 and plus 2. So 2 plus 2, 4 plus 1, 5 minus 5. So 5 minus 5 becomes 0. So p of 1 also 0. Okay, and at last we have to check for the minus 2 also. Check. Check. Third calculation the polynomial P of x is equal to it's a 2x cube plus x square minus 5x plus 2. What the value of x here I replace minus 2. So that is the 2 into minus 2 the cube, minus 2 in the square, 5, then minus 2 and plus 2. Okay, see negative number is there. So take care about the exponent power. Negative number or power, answer is negative. 2 the cube, that is the 8. Now negative number is one power, answer is positive. So plus, this answer is 4. Minus minus plus 5 to the 10 and plus 2. Plus minus minus 8 to the 16. Plus make this all the addition together. So 10 plus 4, 14. 14 plus 2, it's a 16. 16 minus 16, 0. So this one is also 0. So given all the three values in front of our polynomial, these all are the zeros of our polynomial. Now we will establish the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient. Okay, so now let's do it. Sum of the length alpha that is equal to 1 by 2, another 0 beta that's a 1, 
and the third zero that is comma that I am taking minus two. These all are the three zero. Let three zeros. Okay. So now sum of the zeros alpha plus beta plus gamma. So one by two plus one and the minus two. Make the simplification. So what happened? It's a one by two plus one plus minus minus two. Okay. And do the simplification. The one by two. Minus two and plus one it becomes a minus one. So overall answer is a. It's a two ones are two. So one minus two upon LCM is two. So my answer is one by two. Okay. And the sum of the zeros that is a minus p by a. So if I change the value with the minus p by a. So minus. What the value of p? That we will get it after comparing this polynomial with the standard, that means general form of the cubic polynomial. So here the value of a, here I will write down value of a is what two. X cube coefficient value of a is two. Value of b x square coefficient that is one. Value of c x coefficient that is minus five. And value of d that is a constant term. So now we can see a minus b by a. So d value is one, a value is two. So it's a minus one by two. Both the answers are same. So alpha plus beta plus gamma that is equal to minus one by two. That is equal to minus b by a. So first relation verified. Okay. Now we will verify the sum of the Product of the two zeros taken at a time, so that we can write down like this: alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma. Okay. Now alpha into beta. What the alpha? One by two. What the beta? It's a one plus. Again, beta into gamma. Beta is one. Gamma is the minus two. Alpha is the one by two. Gamma is the minus two. One by two into one, that's a one by two plus minus minus two and the two. And here two two will be cancelled out, so only minus left, and nothing is there, so one. So it's a minus one. So after that, one by two minus two minus one, it will be minus three. Okay. And now take the LCM. What the LCM? Two. So one minus three to the six. So it's a minus five by two. Okay, and let's do the sum of the product of the two zeros taken at a time. That is the c by a. And now here you can see this value is equal to what? C by a. What the value of c? Minus five. What the value of a? Two. It's a minus c by. It's a minus five by two. That is equal to c by a. And at last, the product of the Zeros. That is alpha into beta into gamma. Alpha is what? One by two. Beta is what? One. Gamma is what? Minus two. Okay. Two two will be cancelled out. What left? Nothing is there. So one and minus sign only one time. So in the product, it's a minus one. And that is equal to what? Minus d by a. Now check it. D by a. Two by two. That is one. And minus d by a, so that is equal to minus d by a. I, here I replace two and upon two, so two two will be cancelled out. So minus one will reflect. So this one is again the relation between the zeros and the coefficient. Okay. Now let's take the second example. Let us do it. Okay. Now the second example also same way we can verify for this second question. Again, we will check by replacing all these values one by one in our polynomial and verify the they are zeros or not, and verify the relationship also. Now, for this question number two, our polynomial suppose I say e of x is equal to x cube minus four x square plus five x 
minus 2. Suppose I will take the value 2 here. So it's a 2 the cube minus 4 to the square plus 5 into what 2m minus 2. Wherever x is there, each and every place that we have to replace here. Now 2 the cube is 8 minus 4 to the square that is 4. 5 to the 10 and minus 2. So 8, 4 4 the 16 plus 10. 10 minus 2 it becomes 8. 8 plus 8. 16 minus 16 that will be 0. So p of 2 that is equal to 0. That is 2 is a 0 of this polynomial. Now come to the second point. Right. Now we will replace here 1. So p of 1 that directly we will calculate. 1 the cube minus 4. 1 the square plus 5 into 1 and minus 2. Here x, x, x we replaced here. Okay. 1 the cube is 1 minus 1 the square is 1. So 4 as it is. 5 ones are 5 and minus 2. Okay. So 5 plus 1 6 and minus 4 minus 2 that is also minus 6. So overall answer 0. So p of 1 that is equal to 0. So 1 is also 0 of our polynomial. Okay. And 1 here given 2 times because they require the 3 zeros. That's why. So again no required above the third calculation. Okay. Now let's verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient of our polynomial. So now for that our polynomial we will compare with what? It's a standard with the standard polynomial. So that is the value of a coefficient of x cube 1. Value of b coefficient of x square that is a minus 4. Value of c that is a coefficient of x that is 5. And the constant term that is equal to minus 2. Okay. Now let's verify the relationship one by one. Sum of the zeros alpha plus beta plus gamma. What is the alpha? So for that first we will assume let three zeros. R alpha is equal to 2, beta is equal to 1, and the gamma is equal to 1. The three zeros already given that we verified first they are zeros or not, and that we labeling it alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, now alpha plus beta plus gamma. Alpha is 2 plus 1 plus 1, so it's a 4. Okay, now alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to what? Minus by let's check it minus b by a. What the value of b? Minus 4 and upon a that is 1. Okay. And minus is again a minus minus plus. That's a 4 by 1. So you can see here. Okay. Now first relation verified. Second relation. Sum of the product of the two zeros they taken at a time. Alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma. What the alpha? 2. What the beta? 1. What the mean? Beta into gamma? What the beta? 1. What the gamma? 1. Now alpha into gamma. What the alpha? 1. Uh, it's a 2. And gamma is 1. So 2 ones are 2. Plus 1. Plus 2. That overall answer 5. Now alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma that is equal to C by So let's check the value separately. C by A, otherwise you can make it here together. C by A. What the value of C here? What's the value of C is 5. Value of A here 1. So 5 upon 1. That is equal to what? 5. So they are all equal. Now the third relation, product of the zeros. Right? So it's a 2, 1 and 1. So the overall product is 2. And that is equal to, it should be equal to minus b by. So let's check the value of the minus b by a. Minus, what the value of b here? Minus 2. Minus then minus 2 upon value of a, that is the 1. And now you can check it, minus minus plus 2 by 1. So that answer is what? 2. Okay. Okay, with you. Now we are discussing about the question number 2 of our optional exercise. For the question, 
find the cubic polynomial with the sum and sum of the product of its zeros taken two at a time and the product of the zeros are given as 2 minus 7 minus 14. That means sum of all the zeros alpha plus beta plus gamma that is given to sum of the product of the two zeros taken at a time, right? That is given minus 7 and product of all the zeros given minus 14. So first of all we assume let otherwise if alpha beta and gamma are three zeros of cubic polynomial ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus b okay so now what is the sum of the zeros alpha plus beta plus gamma that is given 2 what is the sum of the product of the two zeros at a time that is minus 7 alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma that is equal to minus 7 and what is the product of the zeros alpha into beta into gamma that is given to us minus 14 ok and now simply take this format that already we derived earlier the p of x polynomial that is equal to k x cube minus alpha plus beta plus gamma into x square plus alpha plus beta plus sorry alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma into x and minus alpha into beta into gamma ok simply we have to place these values here and we can get our cubic polynomial it's x cube so k x cube minus alpha plus beta plus gamma that is what 2 and x square alpha plus alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus alpha into gamma that value is what minus 7 so I will place here minus 7 and x and minus alpha into beta into gamma that is minus 14 so what simplification will take place x cube now I change a bracket 2x square plus minus minus 7x minus minus plus 14 that's my required polynomial understood bacho right okay bacho now we will discuss our NCRD textbook question number 3 which is optional exercise mein hi again hamare paas hai right the question is if the zeros of the polynomial this is our polynomial the zeros are a minus b, a and a plus b. So find the value of a and b. Okay. So first from our given polynomial, we will calculate the value of a, b, c and d. Not this a and b. Right. That our required standard form. So in this question a and b is already utilized. So we will take the coefficient symbol capital A, capital B, capital C and capital D. Okay, now take care whenever in your question any of the standard symbol utilized. So, for your required polynomial or the standard form, you have to make the capital sign or the different symbols. Right now, x cube coefficient is 1, x square coefficient is minus 3, x coefficient is nothing so 1, and constant that is 1. Now, first of all, sum of the zeros that is the minus b by a for, for but this question it's a capital B by a minus capital B by a. Now, sum of the zeros a minus b plus a plus a plus b. Sum of the zeros the formula is what minus b by a. Now, a minus b when I open this bracket, so minus b and plus b will be subtracted. So a plus a plus a it becomes a thrice a minus value of b that is minus 3 value of a 1 so minus minus becomes plus so thrice a is equal to 3 so a will be 3 by 3 so value of a is what 1 okay 
So one value we derived. Now come to the second value. Second value that we have to calculate to d. For that we will use the product of the zeros. So a minus b that's a one zero. It's a second zero and it's a third zero. The product of the zeros. What the formula minus b by a minus. But for this question it's a capital D by capital A. Now these two first make the product because they follows the identity. What the identity? It's a a square minus b square. A minus b plus b. The product is the a square minus b square. So a and a square minus b square minus. What the value of d here? One. What the value of a here? One. Okay. Now in this step we will replace the value of a because already we calculated it. So we can get easily the value of b. Value of a here one. One the square minus b square. And that is equal to minus one by one. It becomes a minus one. Okay, so what left? One minus b square is equal to minus one. Okay, now we will shift one there. So minus b square is equal to what? Minus one, and again minus one there. So minus one and minus one addition will be minus two. And both sides are negative, so we can cancel the sign. So b square is equal to two. So b is equal to we have to take the square root, but we know that two is not a perfect square, so root two. But the square root will be maybe positive and negative. So, which your next lecture, ma'am, division algorithm discuss करेंगे. And one request to you, if you like my teaching method, so please like, share, and subscribe my channel. So whenever new video will be uploaded, so you will get the notifications immediately. Thank you.